So here I am with Amy Sample Ward and Allison Capen, who have recently written a book called Social Change Anytime, Everywhere. What I love about this book, first of all, is that if you don't know Allison and Amy, which you probably do already, two of the smartest women when it comes to nonprofit social media, just using internet technology to create awareness for your cause and, and meet whatever objective you have. So when I saw this book come out, I said, wow, this is gonna be some serious genius stuff in here. And it is, it's amazing. It's such a great book. You can actually use it as a, almost like the nonprofit social media Bible, right? You can pick, you can pick wherever you're at. If you're really advanced, you're gonna get something out of this. If you're really beginner, you're gonna get something out of this. You are extremely kind, overly generous. You are invited to introduce us anytime we do a talk uh, with that kind of intro. So thank you very much. One thing I love for beginners is this concept that you guys talk about, I think it's in chapter one, community, network, and crowd, okay? And I really like how you outlined it here. So the the community network crowd, you really think about it as your organization is, is the starting place. And your community, even though a lot of times people use all different words, community, audience, even using the word network now that social media has gotten pretty common, th those mean different things. Your community is all those people that you can touch. You actually have their email address in your database. You have their phone number. They come directly to your offline events. In some way, you can speak to them without having to go through someone else. So even if they're just on your Facebook page and they're not in your database, they're still part of your community because you are able to communicate with them directly on Facebook, on whatever channel they've, they've chosen to connect to you. Whereas the network is really that next layer. So it's all the people in your community have their own friends, families, colleagues, coworkers, partners, etc. That's your network because essentially you can speak to those people, but it has to go through your community. They're your intermediary or liaison, which means it's a little bit further removed and you can't guarantee that they're going to get your message. But when they do get the message, it's coming from a trusted source because it's coming from their friend or their coworker or their, their partner. So even though the, the risk is that maybe not as many people get the message, the payoff is that it's coming from a trusted source even if they don't know you yet as an organization. And the crowd is that last layer, which is everyone else, the people you don't necessarily have an in with or already know how to communicate to. So those are often what, what you would think of in a, in a campaign as the new audiences that may come in. So people that could potentially care about your mission or your campaign, but don't already know you and you don't already know them. So you might just say, well, this is everyone else in New York that we wish was part of our campaign, but we haven't talked to yet. And when you're trying to speak to the crowd, you're thinking of things like, you know, billboards or, or uh, <coughs> campaign messages that can be spread widely on the internet so that it doesn't matter who it is that's sharing the message. And you can also think of the crowd as, if you were thinking about it in terms of social media, um, as Twitter. I mean, that is a huge, huge right. crowd of people that potentially has uh, people that are very interested in your issues, but you haven't been able to connect with them yet. Maybe they don't know about your organization, and this is such a great opportunity for you to really engage with a new crowd and talk about the issues that you all are working on that they're interested in how they can get involved in your organization even at you know at a very low level and starting point yeah Twitter is a great example to demonstrate the layers because say you're gonna launch a campaign today and you have a message that you want to get out there you may send a private direct message to some of your followers that you know often tweet things for you so that's your community that's the message to your community is hey we're launching we want you to tweet this. And then the message they tweet is going out to the network because it's going out to their people. So that's the network layer. And then say that message is crafted so it includes the link to your campaign website or the hashtag you want to use and people start retweeting that. Well, now it's getting out to the crowd. Got it. Okay, got it. So, um, so that Twitter strikes me as more of a network where there are like a pre prevalence of weak ties. 
you know, and the focus is really on the strength of the content. Like I might, a lot of people that I talk to on Twitter, I may have never met, met them, but we share really cool stuff, you know. Facebook, there's more of a prevalence of stronger ties where I actually am friends with this person. I've met them in person. Also on Facebook, you are going to follow or friend people, whereas on Twitter, a lot of people will just follow a hashtag because they want to know what's being talked about, but they don't necessarily want to follow every person that may ever tweet about mobile technology, for example, and they just want to follow the mobile hashtag. Or they just want to follow people that share similar interests, people that they respect, mm -hmm. um, that they may not know on a personal level, they may not be friends with, but they're interested in their ideas. And mm -hmm. I personally, I, I mean, Amy and I have talked about this in the book as well, I have personally have had some of the most thought-provoking discussions in 140 character tweets <laughs> um, with total strangers who were so passionate about a variety of social justice issues. And I think that nonprofits sometimes make the mistake of just thinking about networks like Twitter as just a broadcast tool to, you know, click here to take action, sign this petition, donate money, here's a link to my blog post, here's a link to my press release, rather than actually having these really meaningful discussions. I mean, we all were on Twitter very early on when it was much smaller and you didn't have to sift through all that noise. And if you remember those discussions that you were having with people in the technology community or nonprofit community that you really respected, that you just weren't friends with, you know, there were some really great conversations. And I think that we, we are still having them today. Um, there's just a lot <laughs> There's just a lot more noise to, to sit through, but it's still possible, and I think that there are many organizations like National Wildlife Federation and the Humane Society that are still doing an amazing job of reaching out to that crowd.